Praise the Lord. I'm Dr. Sushrut Pradhan and I welcome you once again to this very important and special program, Building Homes with Christ. We've been talking about how a healthy home can be a blessing to the world. And in that context, we now are talking about marriage. Marriage is most honorable in all. That's what the word of God says. And now we are talking about how can we build a healthy marriage. We started from the point where we discussed that God himself unites a man and a woman in this relationship of marriage. And it's not just God unites them, God himself is a part of it. And then we began to talk about marriage is not a contract because contract is based on absence of trust. But marriage is a covenant because it is based on trust. And then we began to discuss about what exactly is covenant. What are the components of that covenant? And last time, Sister Rosie brought forth such an important point before us that one of the important components is unconditional acceptance. No matter what, you accept each other just as Christ has accepted us. Today, we are going to go further into the discussion about the covenant of marriage. Uh, thank you, Sister Rosie, for joining with us and sharing such important and deep truths about marriage. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Sister Rosie, I would like to um, take this discussion ahead about the components of covenant. We discussed about unconditional acceptance. And the next component, as you mentioned in the last episode, was grace. Can you take us further in understanding what this grace is in this covenant relationship? Surely, Pastor. Uh, the second component that uh, I believe uh, is a part of uh, the covenant, marriage covenant, is uh, grace, unlimited grace, or as you can say, unlimited favor. You know, very often uh, we talk of unlimited favor and the grace of God when it comes, when it comes to a relationship between God and man. Yes. You know, we've always used this word grace when it came to God and man. And we often say that the, the favor of God rests upon us. Unlimited, unmerited favor rests upon us. Uh, yes. The merit and favor of God. But, but the point is that that expression of unmerited favor, unmerited grace, which is expressed by God upon the church, is to be duplicated, is to be copied, is to yes. be repeated all right between man and wife because the relationship between Christ and his people is between the bridegroom and the bride yes. and that's exactly to be repeated over here between man and woman yes. so so when we go forward into this under into the understanding of what is this unlimited grace all about. It brings to my mind a very beautiful story from the Bible, uh, uh, a story with regard to God speaking to, uh, to the prophet Hosea. Yes. Uh, I'm sure you must uh, remember the story and let me, uh, let me kind of narrate some of the aspects of the story for us to understand what was God expecting of, of Hosea uh, 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 with regard to his relationship with the wife that he asked him to marry. Yes. You know, so to give you a brief background, uh, what we understand is that uh, God uh, is very sad because his people have turned away from him. Mm. You know, his heart is broken, he is upset, like, uh, you know, any, anyone would. You know, why you are tending to pour out all your love upon someone and that someone turns away from you. You know, it is heartbreaking. But in this whole episode, you find God 
have, feeling that hurt intensely that his people are turning away from him to other uh, to other so called uh, priorities while god is not no longer their priority god calls upon this prophet hosea and tells him that he needs to go and get married tells him rather let let me put it like this tells him to do something which is extremely painful you know something that no one would ask anybody to do but god calls upon hosea and tells him to do this very very painful thing and that is to marry an adulterous woman and so hosea does in obedience he does it he marries goma now if you look at goma goma should be very happy should have been extremely happy that she has been picked up from that dirt from a life that has been that is uh, that has uh, kind of uh, defined her uh, defined her as a prostitute and she gets into a relationship with a man of god literally you know giving her a position in life you know she should have been so excited about this whole thing so probably for a period of time she must have been very happy you know being given a good life with a good man and she lives with him and uh, um, she gives him a son as well you know but this doesn't continue for too long she goes away her wayward ways come back to her and she leaves her husband ha huh, and leaves uh, and goes away and uh, she goes from one person to another and she gets children from them as well from all those people ha huh? and finally she finds herself in the sex market a slave market where these people such people are used only for sex and god speaks to hosea and tells him go buy her ha huh? get her back i mean i i i'm trying to understand what must have gone through hosea in this situation yes he devotes his life to her marries her and then she leaves him something similar to what happens between god and his people god bestows his love upon his people but they go away from him probably hosea is kind of experiencing the pain which god was experiencing when his people go away you know uh, sometimes i i like to think it like this you know that probably this must have been one reason why god asked hosea to marry gomer i want you people also to understand what my heart goes through when you go away from me yes you know Now so i i see as an this we see as an extreme uh, uh, example that god has given that even when someone is gone away to that extent yes yes sister yes. and then he asks he asks hosea the uh, he asks hosea go and buy her and hosea does it the beautiful thing is hosea does it in obedience he goes and he buys her off the market and then god tells her love her ha huh? god tells her love her now the point that we need to make is we need to think about is does she merit hosea's attention hosea's love with with all the world sense and logic the answer is no no absolutely not how can he love her how can he be patient with her you know when god says love her it is not in the way that the world understands love like we saw in the earlier episode you know the in the earlier episode we did notice we did see that when the world talks about love it is all about you satisfying me the the spouse satisfying me the i is important but when god is asking hosea to to love gomer 
he is irrespective of what she has done who, yes or irrespective of who she is yes she is intending for hosia to make her the focus of his love that you must be patient with her you must be kind with her that she will get the best and the most out of this relationship it is not about even, you at all even when she does not deserve yes now yes. now sister that kind of grace that you are talking about is yes. is something really supernatural Yes. That it is definitely when, definite. sorry go that ahead favor go ahead, that the favor when deserved is is nothing great about it but the favor when it is not deserved is where we see god coming in yes exactly she doesn't deserve she doesn't deserve any of his attention doesn't deserve any of his uh, love his his favor and yet god expects of him to love her sister i i in this context i would like to read this scripture from the book of romans chapter 5 verse 6 onwards for when we were still without strength in due time christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die but god demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were still sinners christ died for us so we were ungodly we were without power and we were sinners yet christ showed his love towards us and that is what the grace of god is all about and that's exactly what god wants us to exhibit when we get into a relationship like the kind of relationship that christ entered with his church the groom marries the bride you know and that's the same thing that when the husband and the wife get married to each other they are covenanting they are covenanting to each other ha huh? that to this i will, level. I, i although you may not at some point or the other you may not merit my favor i will still favor you i will still be gracious to you amen amen uh, you know my my brothers and sisters now this is an important component of marriage covenant that is the grace which is not deserved just the way christ showed his love towards us when we were without power ungodly and sinners he died for us stay with us we'll come back to you after a short break welcome back we are talking about grace god kind of grace has to be manifested and shown in a marriage relationship sister rosy thank you so much for uh, this uh, example that you put forth and this important point that uh, you have uh, told us please take us further deeper into understanding this grace yes pastor you know the the example or the instance where god asks the lord asks uh, hosea to marry gomer you know this whole instance is about an extreme situation an extreme situation probably god will not ask us to do something like that but rather he is expressing to us this fact that no matter no matter how unredeemable your spouse may be you know you still have to stay with the your spouse and you still have to love him amen yeah that is so important sister that uh, how much ever it look like impossible and bad situation still in that covenant you choose to love and care yes the reason why we go into a situation of uh, of divorce you know is because we think about ourselves you know we think about ourselves i don't deserve this i cannot tolerate this any more yes you know 
I am not cut out for this kind of a life where they go do what they want to do and I have got to continue to express. It is the, the word divorce and the word separation comes in when I become important in the relationship. You know, but on the other hand, when the focus is the other person, all right, and at that point of time, the unmerited grace that we are talking about begins to, begins to influence the wrong party to, to get better because I am sowing into you love, I am sowing into them patience, I am sowing into them kindness, I am sowing into them uh, 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 you know, a sense of uh, being very tender and uh, temperate, you know. So, what I sow, I will reap, I will get back. See, uh, sister, isn't our transformation is also at the same, in the same line, when we were undeserved, Christ loved and gave himself for us and that is what makes us a new creation and then we change. Exactly. Uh, because his unconditional love towards us. Yes. In fact, that's one of the meanings of grace. Yes. It is influence. So, Amen. yeah. So, when I am showing that that kind of grace towards the partner, when a one, par one partner expresses that kind of unmerited grace or unmerited influence upon the other person, there is a natural tendency for that person to be influenced and so therefore change over, be transformed and give back the same what they have received. You know, my, my, my brothers and sisters, I hope you have caught this important point that sister has spoken to us, that when you unconditionally show that grace towards your spouse. What you are actually doing is sowing the seed for the positive transformation of your spouse or of your husband or, or your wife. And that's the pattern that even our Lord Jesus has shown. When we were undeserving, he showed his love and died for us on the cross. And now, because of that seed, we experience the transformation in our lives. Sister, yes. thank you so much. Yeah, please go ahead, sister. Yeah. So, what happens in this whole scenario is that, that each of the spouses tend to influence the other person towards becoming Christ-like. You know, I concentrate on pouring my love into the other person till there is a Christ likeness in them. Similarly, they also continue to pour their love and their grace upon me until I, I am transformed into Christ likeness, which is actually, which is actually the purpose of a marriage. One of the purposes of the marriage, you can say, to become Christ like and to move to into our destiny. Sister, I'm I'm remembering. Um a conversation that I had with a wonderful woman of God. She was married for over 50 years, uh, happily married. And one day uh, I just uh, asked her, sister, what is point number one you can tell, which is the reason for such wonderful marriage? And she said that we have learned to give grace to one another. That means Amen. treat each other better than what we deserve. And that is exactly what Christ has done with us. And that's exactly what you're telling. And then this is what she said, that when we began to do that, that means show grace to each other, we began to see a positive transformation in each other. So such a, such a powerful truth, sister, you have told us. Thank you. Uh, please go ahead, sister. So, uh, yeah, I mean, at this particular point, one can actually say that in no marriage, in no marriage should any spouse end up saying enough is enough. I can take no more. Because marriage is not about I can, how much I can take, but marriage is about what I can give to the other person and so, build so them now, into sister, Christ. You are, you are telling about 
unlimited patience as a result of that grace. Yes. That yes. never say enough is enough. Always keep trying for the positive result. So, sister, um, you know, this is such a wonderful point that you have shared that when we show that unlimited grace, we are sowing the seeds for each other's transformation, which will take us further. Yes, Pastor. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, I would actually like to like to uh, uh, to bring up an instance, you know, where, where uh, you find that uh, when you are unhappy with your spouse and you don't feel ex very gracious towards them because of the wrong that they may have done, all right, where the wrong is highlighted, there is a tendency for us to stop doing what we would otherwise have done towards them. For instance, you know, I really don't know whether you are aware of this. Uh, there are some homes, there are some homes who have separate rooms for each, for each of the spouses. You know, where they say this is my room and that is your room. You know, this is mine and that is yours. So, especially this is, this becomes very pronounced when you find that that there is a disagreement between the bo between the spouses when there is an un misunderstanding when there is a tendency for you not to be patient with them that's when you start going into your own special corners so w w sister w w what you are uh, telling is that sometimes when there is this kind of friction between a husband and wife instead of showing that patience and care and grace they simply go into their own corners sometimes own rooms and sometimes own places so that they don't have to interact or they don't have to kind of talk to each other right right and in fact and in fact that is not at all a part of the covenant of a marriage sometimes what happens is when we see our spouse who has done something wrong we want to forgive we want to treat well but it becomes something very difficult that's where we need to understand the grace of god is needed and we need to show that sister can you throw a little bit more light on this yeah in fact i'm just trying to imagine a situation the situation that uh, that god put uh, hosea into when he asks uh, uh, hosea go bring her you know and love her after all her running around and uh, he must have brought he brings her definitely he brings her but then you know i'm just trying to put uh, uh, ourselves into that situation what we would have said okay lord i've done it i've brought her home now don't expect me to love her you know the things that she has done you know what all the things and you know the children that she's born for those people how do you expect me to and then i'm i'm in fact thinking you know we would go around talking to our friends get our friends together to support <laughs> our <laughs> argument yes you know to support to our how argument bad my spouse is yeah yeah we would do all of that we would get family we would get friends to support us but God did not expect us to do that. He does not expect us to do that. He tells, he, he, I guess he would tell us the same way he tells Hosea. Bring her, love her. Amen. Graciously show your favor upon her, unmerited favor. You know, which would imply, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, uh, imagine a situation like this, which would imply that when both of them step out of the house <laughs> the world huh. around there is looking at her giving her dirty looks and giving him a very pitiful look how would you think he would react to all of that god expects him to show favor to her in other words put his hand around her probably and, and tell her, and, don't and worry, I'm love. standing by you. I understand and I support you. I love you. Don't be worried about what the world is saying. Amen. You know, sister, this is, this is so important. And my, my brothers and sisters, what we are seeing over here is 
grace or favor which is absolutely not deserved. God expected Hosea to show that and it's not just Hosea showed that. In our case, God himself has shown that kind of grace and favor towards us when we did not deserve at all. And this is a very important component of marriage covenant. That is, you must show favor and love to your spouse even when the spouse does not deserve it in any way. And when you do that, you are sowing the seeds of transformation. That means, my brothers and sisters, remember those words of Jesus. Bless those who curse you. Show love to those who hate you. The same thing we have to put forth in our marriage covenant. Whether your spouse deserves or not, you still continue to graciously love, accept, take care heartfully. That is where the name of the Lord will be glorified and the power of God will be manifested. Sister, thank you so much for uh, this uh, wonderful depths. I request you to pray for all of us so that we all may move in that grace that God has shown. Yes, Pastor. Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you so much for this marvelous time that you gave us, Lord, where we could study and understand what you mean when you expect us to show grace, unmerited favor to us, to our spouses, Father. Lord, we ask of you, Lord, that even as you have taught us, you will give us the willing willingness, Lord, to walk in that path of unmerited favor, unmerited grace, Lord. Lord, let our marriages not be about us, Lord. Let our marriages always be about our spouses, about how we can love them, how we can cherish them, how we can hold them. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask of you, Father, that unless you intervene in this, Father, it is not going to be easy for us. So we commit ourselves into your hands, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, help us here to be the kind of spouses that you want us to be, Father. Just as you were with your bride, Father, you are with your bride, so also may we also be with our spouses. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Um, thank you very much, sister. And thank you all for joining us with this uh, program. I encourage you to uh, invite your friends and relatives also to join with us. Next week, we will go deeper in understanding the components of this marriage covenant. Until then, God bless you. See you again next week.